This is Eggman's crypto mine. It produces enough energy to power all of Station Square. Let's get in there and smash the blockchain. Smash the blockchain? What'll happen to my NFT? Your what? I bought an NFT of the Master Emerald to prove I own it. You knucklehead! Tell me if you ever heard this before. Sonic had a rocky transition to 3D. I would argue he had a rougher jump to the big screen. Fans and studio executives alike have attempted Sonic's cinematic debut. And then we got this abomination. The first Sonic movie is honestly a miracle. Most game to film adaptations were destined for failure. Yet, Sonic Movie 1 avoided that fate. It was fun, hilarious, and respected the source material. It was guaranteed there'd be a sequel. After two years of waiting, I finally watched Sonic Movie 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a 2022 action comedy about a blue guy fighting a red guy over a green diamond. Eggman returns to Earth and becomes friends with newcomer Knuckles. In reality, Eggman dupes Knuckles into leading him to the Master Emerald, which contains ultimate power. Sonic and his new BFF Tails team up to recover the Emerald before it's too late. I saw it on opening night, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It builds upon the most crucial elements of its predecessor. Does Sonic Movie 2 live up to the hype? That's what I intend to find out. And don't worry, there won't be any spoilers. Let's run straight into this. At its core, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a coming-of-age action buddy comedy. Set a few months after the first movie, Dr. Robotnik escapes from the Mushroom Planet. He bumps into Knuckles, a strong red warrior kidna who answers the doctor's distress beacon. Knuckles explains the myth of the Master Emerald, a giant jewel with ultimate power. He swears to protect it. Stunned by this revelation, Eggman convinces the naive echidna that Sonic is hunting the Emerald. Where have I heard that before? The two make an alliance and head to Earth to find the jewel. Back at home, Sonic's adopted parents leave for a Hawaiian wedding. Sonic swears to Donut Lord he'll avoid trouble while they're gone. Tails monitors Eggman's plans and comes to warn Sonic. Knuckles overpowers the Blue Boy and sends him on the run. Tails teams up with Sonic to find the Master Emerald before it's too late. My biggest fear going into the sequel would be the portrayal of Tails and Knuckles. Would they be as interesting as their source material, or just become one note cannon fodder? Thankfully, it's the former. Tails is an easily scared, yet technologically capable friend. He's cute, quirky, and poses a great contrast to Sonic's reckless yet brave behavior. He confesses to spying on Sonic since the baseball incident in Sonic Movie 1. That is a tad creepy, even if Sonic quickly brushes it off. The vocal performances are amazing. Ben Schwartz is a natural fit for Sonic. Colleen O'Shaughnessy, who voiced Tails in the mainline games, reprises her role in this movie. She delivers a soft yet confident cadence for the Fox Boy. This role is significant for a few reasons. When it comes to video game based movies, studios always cast A-list celebrities instead of, you know, the actual game actors or even experienced voice actors. Take the upcoming Mario movie. Charles Martinet, who voiced Mario for 25 years, is apparently not good enough. But Chris Pratt, aka Chris, I won't do an accent for the most Italian Italian man ever Pratt? Yep, definitely my first choice. Chris Pratt is a fine enough actor, but he was chosen more for name recognition rather than being a suitable fit for Mario. Voice acting in video games is a criminally undervalued profession. It doesn't matter how much effort voice actors give, Hollywood regards them as utterly replaceable. Sonic Movie 2 subverts this cynical trend. O'Shaughnessy fits the ensemble cast like a glove. Her inclusion gives street cred to otherwise underappreciated game actors. Sonic Movie 2 does use celebrity actors, but they're used to great effect. Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik easily steals the show. He is an unhinged maniac with a whole lot of style. You can tell Carrie's enjoy every second of his role. Some of his quirky one-liners are a little excessive, but he is an entertaining antagonist and a lover. Back in the first movie, Eggman and his assistant Agent Stone were agents for the US government. Agent Stone was a straight man to Eggman's extroverted behavior. Stone had obvious affection for his superior. This is the diamond that I'm going to give to my brand new husband and or wife. Whoa, he's bisexual. I didn't know that. By the way, I'm bisexual. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to announce it. Sonic Movie 2 cranks the bromance style up to 11. 
However, Eggman downplays Stone's involvement when Knuckles joins the team. Stone gets jealous and gives into the friend zone. I never thought I would witness a love triangle in a Sonic movie. My favorite addition is Idris Elba as Knuckles. Knuckles is a headstrong warrior who is lonely and a little naive to Earth's customs. Elba is known for his tough guy roles, but he excels as the red dope. His fish out of water dialogue and comedic timing choked me up. It also helps that the screenplay didn't skip leg day. Dead sucker! Sonic Skateboard! The script to Sonic Movie 2 is not afraid to embrace Sonic's inherent absurdities. The first movie kept the plot simple and it worked in its favor. However, the end product played its themes a little too safe. It was mostly devoid of surprises or deep character interaction. The sequel is like, let's go all out with Sonic iconography. Sonic Movie 2 brilliantly utilizes the best characteristics from the classic games. Tails flies a plane and uses his gizmos in fun ways. Team Sonic visits exotic locales and snowboards in the Himalayas. This movie is a love letter to the source material. The script's greatest strength is the chemistry among the trio. Sonic and Tails have a big brother, little brother dynamic, and it was so cute to see. Whether it's Sonic teasing Knuckles, or Tails cautioning Sonic to be careful, the humor is as sharp as ever. To be fair, there are a few blemishes. For one, Tails admits he spied on Sonic ever since the power blackout in the first movie. Sonic isn't that shocked and immediately gets over this invasion of privacy. It's played for laughs, but it's weird there isn't much friction before they become best friends. Secondly, there is an over-reliance on pop culture references. Wait a second, did you steal that from Oprah? <laughs> oh great, the Winter Soldier! It makes in-universe sense because he's into comic books, but still, this movie uses too much on Oh my god, he said the thing. One of the biggest criticisms levied against this film is the marriage supply. Pretzel Lady's sister Rachel is holding a wedding in Hawaii. Donut Lord and Pretzel Lady visit the resort, but Rachel's husband-to-be doesn't approve of Donut Lord. On one hand, this subplot doesn't seem that important, but it has an amazing payoff I won't spoil. It's hilarious, unexpected, and helps flesh out the human side characters. I do agree that it eats up too much screen time. This film is two hours long and it would have benefited from tighter editing. The film's greatest asset is the visual effects. It looks really nice. It's on the same level as the intro to Sonic Unleashed. The action scenes are inventive and make full use of everyone's abilities. The colors are popping and the camera movement is super dynamic. My only nitpick is Eggman's crappy rotoscoping during the avalanche chase. He looks pixelated compared to everyone else. Oh, and the ending turns into Sonic Heroes, and there's this big robot fight in- uh, okay, okay, I won't spoil it, but the ending was dopamine overload. It sucks they didn't use any Crush 40 music for this part, but it was an emotionally earned climax. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is everything I wanted out of a sequel. The visual effects are spectacular, the action scenes are inventive, and it did justice to the source material. It's no thought-provoking masterpiece, but it has a lot of charm and a sincere message on friendship. Plus, the chemistry among the three animal leads will make any fan smile. Video game movies will still struggle to be good, but the crew behind this film knows what they're doing. The studio has respect for the games and the fans, and I, for one, cannot wait for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I would like to give a shout out to my friend, the Art Yoshi. She drew the vector art in the intro, which I later put into After Effects. If you need an art commission based on your own Sonic OC, she's up to the task. Big thanks to Art Yoshi for providing the artwork. As for my loyal viewers, thank you for watching. And remember, no hedgehogs were harmed in the making of this video. Oh, before I go, I know you guys have been clamoring for a Sonic Underground review. You guys don't have to pester me, the Sonic Underground review is on its way.